A corridor is 13.2 meters long and has closed door that reflect at both ends. The speed of sound in the air is 330 meters per second. Here's a clue. Close that reflects sound at both ends. That means we're going to treat this corridor as a closed, closed tube. Ah, they already wrote close, close. Ah, close, close. Which means at the ends of these two, there must be nodes. Where nodes mean there is no vibration. Well, what is the lowest frequency of the sound that could create a stationary wave in the corridor with a node halfway along it? So that means there's another node. Oh, here's another node. So how would you draw the wave? This one you gotta learn how to draw. You just draw a loop here and a loop here. This is how the wave would look like. Of course, the wave will oscillate. So over time, we represent the drawing with a dotted line like this. There we go. Our stationary wave pattern. Okay. Lowest frequency. Well, we already have this picture here. This is the lowest possible. How do we find the frequency though? Uh, we have velocity. Okay, that's good. We need frequency. We are missing lambda. V equals to F lambda. We need to know the lambda. The hint is right here in the 13.2. So you need to recognize that whenever you see one of these loops, that's actually half a wavelength. Because you know, just now we draw right one hole like this, this pattern, that's a full wavelength. So half of that, half hole, half a wavelength. Okay, this is what we call this is what we call a loop. So side calculation here, lambda over two is you can use that calculation, or you can I have to say lambda, the whole wavelength. <laughs> is 13.2 or you can say lambda over 2 is 13.2 over 2 okay find the answer lambda over 2 hey we already found the answer ah, lambda over 2 is 13 ah, yeah, then we can calculate 330 equals to frequency times 13.2 nice 13.2 divided by 330 gives what am I doing? 330 divided by 13.2. Ah, that's the other way. Frequency should be 25 hertz. Okay, so we'll go with 25. That's our frequency. Just based on the diagram. So you need to know how to draw this diagram. Then you know what length to use for your wavelength. Okay, so that's all for this question.